Hello everybody, uh, my name is Benjamin Bloom. Um, real apologies for those people trying to watch the live stream this morning. Uh, I'm going to have to have a good look at my technology here because just continually dropped off and I don't want to take the piss out of the people who turn up for the live feed and try to comment. Um, so I'll, I'll do this just as a normal YouTube video and I'll really try and look at it and I can only apologise if you got online ready to watch and ready to comment. Um, I'll take a good look at it, but evidently my iPad is just too old and cannot cope with what it's being asked to do anymore. Anyway, so reduced uh, championship program yesterday. Um, six championship teams involved in the FA Cup. One more today, um, Sheffield Wednesday go to Chelsea. One more tomorrow with Brentford off to Barnet. So you're starting to get a lot of messing with the um, fixture program and some teams are going to be looking at a very, very tough February. Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, possibly three weeks running. And for those who've got replays, maybe even worse with the three games a week. Um, so still um, plenty of championship action and three of the top six involved um, Leeds, Norwich and Sheffield United all playing so a chance for them to put some points in on the teams around them it was Rotherham versus Leeds and Leeds get the win at Rotherham winning 2-1 there two goals from Klitsch the second in the 86th minute to win the game the type of um, performance you need if you were going for the title. But first of all, what a goal by Ajayi for Rotherham. Whenever I log on for um, championship goals, I don't necessarily expect to see Rotherham score a goal like that, but absolute beauty from him. Smash it into the top corner from um, 30 yards. Good build-up as well. Leeds now two points clear of Norwich at the top. Um, six clear of Sheffield United in third. So good day for Leeds. They took two points um, out of both of those two teams. Uh, West Brom are a point back from Sheffield United. They have a game in hand, but as we will discuss, um, they're really going to be getting fixture pile up um, going forward now, given they've got a cup replay to throw into an already busy February. Huge game um, against Norwich um, next week for Leeds. First versus Second um, title decider. I don't know. We will see. Uh, no Janssen for Leeds yesterday. He will be back next week. Um, new keeper. Casilla made his debut. And I was told in the feed when it was live that he made a brilliant save as well. Surely we will see one of Brown, Berardi, Bamford, Douglas, Dallas back in the squad next week. You've still got Alioski covering at left back. You've still got two youngsters playing out wide. Phillips was covering Janssen yesterday. So still nowhere near a full strength team for Leeds but they crack on at the top of the league Rotherham are still outside of the bottom three one win in 14 Bolton play Reading on Tuesday so a potential drop into the bottom three before they play the next game for Rotherham um, I think if Reading get the win there also um, I think Bolton have to win 4-0 or something which is highly unlikely uh, but they would go level on points with uh, Rotherham, if not above them, if they got the win. So looking good for Leeds. I'll be at uh, Norwich versus um, Leeds next week. So really looking forward to that one. Check out the match review. Speaking of Norwich, they, in the big game this week, drew 2-2 against Sheffield United um, at Carrow Road. Um no winner. So in these instances, it's probably the teams around them, excuse me, that will be um, happiest with that result. Although I guess you've got the caveat that neither team lost and lost out on points to each other. But obviously Leeds took two points out of them. West Brom have got that game in hand, as have Middlesbrough and Derby now. So they also potentially can take two points out of them if they can get the win. Um, Hernandez with the opener for Norwich. Sharp with a penalty for half-time. Nice um, Royal Rumble-themed celebration from Sharp there. Um, Puki 2-1 in the second half. If he meant that to go where it did, that was an absolutely brilliant finish by Puki. Uh, Sharp heads the equaliser. 19th 
of the season for him. Um, Norwich, we've said for a while, if they can get through this run of games intact um, with the top two, um, it's going to be okay for them. And it looks all right with this draw. So the worst case scenario next week is their level on points with second place. You know, if they lose to Leeds and Sheffield United win their game. Um, I think Sheffield United are home to Bolton. I could be wrong about that. But I looked and Sheffield United do have a, a, a what looks like a winnable game there. So then 16 game run in for Norwich with a lot of the hard games out of the way and Leitner, Teddy closer all to come back would make you fairly positive if you were a Norwich fan. Obviously, if they can go there and win next week would be an incredible boost for Norwich. We'll see how that one pans out. Sheffield United, um, given they're the away team, they're probably happy with this. They haven't done amazing against the top six teams. So to take four points out of Norwich, um, surely they'll be happy with that one, they're still in the chase. Dowell and Medin both started yesterday. Slight surprise there. So a little bit more strength um, evident. We said before the transfer window, they'd need to pop some new faces in, possibly. Um, I will be at their game at Villa on February the 8th. So um, interesting one, that one, as the chase goes on. Um, right, we're going to deal with some FA Cup people now. So West Brom drew with Brighton, not a result that they would have wanted yesterday. That means a replay on February the 5th. So now they're going to be playing seven times between the 2nd of February and the 23rd of February. Um, you never know how the whole game in hand thing works. If you've got momentum, it's okay. But everybody always says, give me the, give me the points on the board rather than a high pressure game to play. Borough also drew... <laughs> Last minute equaliser at home to Newport. So their pile up, a little bit more complicated as well because their fixture this week was Bristol City who also went through in the Cup. So we'll await and see where that one lands in possibly later on in uh, March or April, that one, because it just doesn't look like room for it in February. Uh, Derby in sixth went to Accrington and won. So they are in the hat. Um, so good for them that there's no replay. Good in terms of momentum. They were due to play Wigan on February the 16th. So that will be shoved back later in the season. If you want a rearranged uh, fixture, one at home is what you want and one against a lower team is what you want. So Derby, you know, be pretty all right with that, I would have thought. And we've said about Derby lots of times on here that um, they only have one top six team to play now, West Brom, on the last day of the season. Uh, Bristol City were in the cup and won also. They knocked out Bolton. 12 unbeaten um, on Friday night. Six straight wins for Lee Johnson. Um, the streak king is probably on one of his best streaks he's ever had. So um, long may it continue if you're a Bristol City fan. They're still, um, I think, one point off Derby. I haven't checked my table. Possibly one or two points off Derby back. Um, in fact, why don't I check my table because I've got it right in front of me. Sorry, two points off Derby. Um, they're in seventh spot. And speaking of streaks though, the league's uh, most fun and slightly unlikely streak is over now. Hull finally losing a game. Blackburn 3, Hull nil. Obviously I saw Blackburn last week. Um, they uh, beat Ipswich handily 2-0 uh, and they beat Hull even more handily here. 3-0, great win. Um, the goals from Armstrong, from Netflix's Jack Rodwell and Harrison Reed. So, fourth straight win in a row for Rovers. Remember back a few weeks when we said the chasing pack was Forest and it was Villa. And then we thought it was Birmingham and uh, Bristol City. Um, now, Blackburn have joined in and... With it being that tight between sort of 8th and 14th, 15th place, four wins in a row really shoots you up. They're only three points off Derby now. and We've mentioned Derby still in the FA Cup. So um, you'd have thought that Rovers um, would be happy um, with where they are. But you never, you never, never know. Other teams have got maybe a bit more on the pitch and a bit more in the bank. But, you know, people go on runs, don't they? Um... What can you say about Hull? Ridiculous, ridiculous run from them. Seven wins and three draws in the last ten. So I think we can give Nigel Atkins a pass on that. 
Let's see now whether they regress to the mean and drop into the pack or they go on another run. We will see with Hull. Is Adkins as streaky as Johnson? Let's find out. Um, though do we've all enjoyed Hull the past month or two. Um, Forest 3, Wigan 1. Martin O'Neill gets his first win as Forest boss and they spring up to ninth. They weren't in a terrible position under Karanka. Uh, some nice finishing here. Um, Lolly Cash and Guediora... Windass for Wigan. Joe Garner missing a penalty there. So Forrest, like I say, up to ninth. Four points off Derby in sixth. And we're sort of wondering, can he build any momentum now? Um, from the outside, it looked like a bit more of a direct, bit more decisive style than Karanka's maybe more pragmatic style. So um, I, I didn't see the game. I haven't seen Forrest under O'Neill. So be interested in the comments as to whether um, that looks right. Uh, Wigan. Stay in 20th. Still a six-point cushion on the bottom three. Uh, one draw and one win in the last 11. So any surge from any of the teams below. Um, and Wigan are in trouble there. Speaking of the teams below, here comes my team. Ipswich. And they stay bottom. Uh, Villa 2. Ipswich 1. Two goals from Abraham. 19 in 23 appearances from the goal machine absolute beauty from Sears to get one back Ipswich hit the post at 2-1 um, Villa did miss a couple of other chances too um, Villa not quite looking where they were a few weeks back they looked like they were on the right track Smith was getting everything working um, but it seems to have dropped off a little bit now and the defence seems to have been reconfigured with Elphick back in there um, they're obviously Miss Grealish, he makes a difference to any team you find him in. Um, that said, though, enough to beat Ipswich. Um, I got a little bit of mockery yesterday in my video for saying that that was actually an improvement from Ipswich. And um, I'm afraid you do have to look at the numbers and say it was an improvement. They um, haven't been challenging in their last five away games at all. Haven't scored and, you know, it's been 2-0, 2-0, 3-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0 sort of thing. So... For the fact that they were in the game, um, they got back to 2-1 and they hit the post. You know, that's something. They actually could have taken a point yesterday. Um, bit, you know, confused at people um, not going to the game and then, you know, looking at the, looking at the shot count. Um, I'm telling you, if you're 2-1 down and you hit the post, you're in the game. So, um, you know, I don't think just um, reading the shot count um, is necessarily... The best type of analysis, but hey ho, the table doesn't lie, and Ipswich are still down at the bottom. Sheffield Wednesday at home next week, so um, certainly Ipswich a lot more chance of winning at home at the moment than away. Um, we shall see. Uh, Swansea are 11 from Birmingham, a 13th. Um, Swansea won in the cup yesterday against Gillingham. Um, Swansea and Birmingham play on Tuesday night, so Birmingham have had. Um, well, a long little period off because they played Friday night um, last week. So they'll be nicely rested um, and we'll probably talk about that game after it happens on Tuesday. Uh, QPR, yeah, they're in the cup replay um, hat here. Uh, they drew at Pompey. So replay on the 5th and just start looking at those February fixtures. Um, 2nd, 5th, 9th, 12th. Um, 16th, 17th, you know, really, really starting to pile up for these FA Cup teams. Uh, Stoke played at home to Preston. It was Stoke nil, Preston 2. Uh, Stoke in 15th, Preston now in 16th. Great away win for Preston. Uh, Brown, we seem to mention every single week. He gets the goal on 20. Look from the highlights like Stoke created a few chances there. Sorry, 10th of the season for um, Brown. Potts. Got the decisive goal on 80 minutes. Two in three already since he's arrived. Penalty saved uh, from Klukas. Looked like good rear guard action. A good away win for Preston. Their um, frustrating season for Preston. Terrible start. Really good run. Then loads of injuries. Bad run. Some good signings come in. Maybe the start of a good run. Um, I'm sure players will come back as we go. I think I saw a few of them on the bench coming back yesterday. So... Um, I think mid-table is their only hope really now so far off. And, you know, unfortunately, a bit of a write-off of the season for Preston when, you know, they can be 
really good and they can put good results together. Stoke, still only one win under Nathan Jones. Um, we thought possibly is it lift off now after they beat Leeds last week, but no, bit of a false start and they stay in 15th spot. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday are off to Chelsea later on. Uh, Brentford are off to Barnet tomorrow. I will be at that game, so check out my match review of that sort of half ten time. That will be up on YouTube. Millwall stand 19th, but big TV win over Everton, who didn't seem to have done their research on Jake Cooper at all. Anyone who watches this division knows all the set plays go to him, and he gets an assist and a goal uh, yesterday. Um, they are in the hat, so their trip to Hull is getting moved. I don't know if you're a Millwall fan. Good thing. Bad thing, I suppose, you've got to be so happy with a great win like that on TV. Um, so let's hope it gives them a push and doesn't snarl up their fixtures and cause problems for them. Uh, Reading had the weekend off, and it's a really big game for Reading at Bolton on Tuesday night. Bolton did play, obviously, at Bristol City on Friday, so Reading have had more time to prepare. And Nelson Oliveira in on loan from Norwich is an interesting signing for them. We know big fallout at Norwich, but before then, Norwich paid a hell of a lot of money for him and he'd scored regularly for Forrest. So good player if his um, head is right. Um, although he's not played, <clears throat> it seems he hasn't played for almost a year, um, given all this fallout at Norwich. So somewhat of a gamble, but if it pays off, could be could be the goals to keep Reading up. They seem best placed maybe out of the bottom three to, to kind of push on. Um, let's go to some YouTube questions. Always put the shout out. Um, again, I apologise. We could have done these live, but uh, technology fell down. Uh, ben, Nottingham Forest fan. Would you advise Forest to bring in Roy Keane alongside Martin O'Neill? He was spotted in the crowd yesterday, so could be likely. God, look, I'm an Ipswich fan, so I'm probably the wrong guy to ask. Roy Keane was pretty poisonous at Ipswich, but... He was in charge and he didn't have someone above him editing him. So maybe they could play good cop, bad cop. Um, I don't know. Um, obviously Keane, hugely successful player. Played under some brilliant managers as well. Brian Clough and Alex Ferguson. So surely there's some knowledge there. Just with Keane, you always worry about the, you know, his mental state and his ability to actually communicate with other human beings. Um, if he can get that right and add the drive he did as a player, then he could be brilliant. But we've seen it go wrong before with Keane. So um, uh, I'll plead the fifth on that one. But on the evidence of what I saw at Ipswich, um, keep him away. But you never know. Um, Martin O'Neill seems to want him there. So um, he knows more than me. Jack Barham says, why are referees so bad in the championship? Um, this is obviously an Ipswich fan alluding to the... Uh, penalty call and the handball um, not given against Ipswich. Look, no, and by the way, no Ipswich fan is saying they're bottom of the league because of referees. They're not. But I think generally um, the referees struggle in, um, in the championship. We'll see how the VAR goes um, in the Premier League where they come in. Obviously that will help, but then can all the stadiums finance it? And is it an evening, an even playing field? Um, they seem to need some kind of help the rule changes every year and um, they struggle to keep up with the pace of um, these modern players so um, I don't know um, why they're so bad but um, they seem to need some help don't they so we'll see what they can do uh, Adam says the Ipswich now do look doomed look like they put up a fight against Philly yesterday um, Ipswich do look doomed but you never know um, two wins on the trot and you're right back in it so um, they need to just be able to um, win <laughs> win some points away and I suppose scoring a goal and being in a game is is some um, progress yesterday. Uh, KB says, do you think Nelson Oliveira's move to Reading will be enough to keep Reading up? Um, possibly, yeah. Uh, as I said a minute ago, if he keeps his keeps his head and um, what are we looking at now? 17 games to go. If he can score six, seven, eight goals in that time, then, then yes. But um, he's not played for a while. He needs to get up to speed. Pretty quickly. My predicted three for relegation, obviously it's a it's a four game league down the bottom there at the moment. Unless we see something miraculous and a big change of form from one of the bottom three, they're not gonna come up past uh Millwall and, and Wigan. Um so yeah, it's three from four out of Ipswich, uh Bolton, Reading, 
and uh, Rotherham. And you would say, given Reading have just been able to add a couple of players, maybe they're the ones to survive is how you'd look at the moment. But none of them winning. So if anyone starts any kind of remotely good form, they will stay up. Uh, Hugo, in your opinion, who's the hardest team to predict in the championship? I would go for Villa 5-5 versus Forest Reading loss to Wigan. Uh, Villa are one of them. You know the one I've always struggled with is Blackburn. Whenever I've thought they were going to drop off, they've started winning again. And whenever they've, I've thought, um, okay, they're a winning team now, they've, they've dropped off. So I've always struggled with Blackburn. And Preston have been a weird one as well. And you throw Villa in there too. Uh, Bob LUFC says, is Jack Clark worth 15 million? Obviously talking about the Leeds winger. He's only played a few games and he's been really good. He was a complete star against Derby in one of those games. Um, the answer to the question is probably if, if Leeds don't need to sell, then Jack Clark is probably worth 15 million because they can say to anyone who you know comes in and tries to pinch him as a gamble, look, well, we don't need to sell, so you've got to pay big money for him and you would suspect um, that 15 million might tempt them. If Leeds do need to sell, then you'd imagine someone could get him cheaper than that. I guess if they go up, they won't need to sell and all will be well. So um, possibly it all depends on who's bidding and whether, and the Leeds finance sheet, which I'm sure we'd all love to have a look at, but uh, we don't have the tools to see that. Um, thank you ever so much for watching. A um, bit frustrated today, obviously, because we tried the live stream three times and it failed every time. And I know um, we have people that, you know, get ready uh, when I put the tweet out and um, are ready to watch. So real, real big apology. I'm going to have a look at my technology because the live stream had been really, really fun. So if you turned up to watch that um, and it failed three times, I I'm, I'm really can't apologise enough. And we'll, we'll look at how to, um, how to get that working better. I suspect it's my iPad dying on its ass. that's the problem. Um, so... Old school YouTube feedback here. Um, feedback in the comments. Let me know what you think on anything I've said. As I always say, I see as many teams as I can, but if you see your team every week, then you know more about them than I. So please um, smarten me up on anything you've seen that I haven't. Um, thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Um, please hit subscribe. Loads of championship content. And we've got a really good bunch um, who comment on these videos. Very knowledgeable um, fans indeed follow me on twitter at benjamin bloom i will be back uh watching brentford um tomorrow night um we'll try and have the tech sorted ready for a live stream on thursday preview and then big weekend i'm going to be at preston derby on friday night i'll be on talk norwich city with jack reeve and we'll be filming that on saturday then i'll be at norwich versus leeds on um, Saturday night. Massive, massive game there. Really looking forward to it. So loads of content. Well worth subscribing. Apologies one more time if you saw the shitstorm that was the attempt at getting a live stream going. I will get it sorted. I promise. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon.